Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and in this video we're going to do is we're going to continue our exploration of Next.js by discussing kind of how routing works. It works, if you're familiar with React Router, if you watched my React series, uh, this should, you should kind of see where this is going. But basically, let's say we, in our first video, we have Bob and Index. So let's say I want to go from Bob, from I want to create a link on Index to Bob. So I'll create like a h2 be below that h1 that says go to Bob. Now we're not going to use an a href link, just like React Router, we're going to use a, the ta a link tag. Okay. Okay, and then that link tag will link to where we're going. So it'll be like a href, not a href, but link href equals slash Bob. That should be in quotations. Slash Bob. Okay, and let me go move that closing tag to wrap go to Bob around that. Cool. Save. Okie dokie. So now, oh, we some it doesn't like something. Expected corresponding JSX closing tag for link. Oh, it's got to be capitalized. Because all React components are capitalized. It demands such. Okay, so that's coming. Will it render? Well, I don't want to go to Bob. I want to go to the original. So we're going to go to the root. It'll take us to the index.js. Link is not defined. Oh, I think I got it imported, don't I? Okay. So I gotta import link from, I think it's from next router. I think it's the package. Although I should probably spell from correctly, that would be helpful. So save. Event type is invalid, expected a string for built-in components. Okay, so basically what we needed to do, that's all fine. Um, it's just it's the, the library is called next link. So next link is the library we need to import there so that we can use the link tag. Okay, and, and also that way it doesn't get confused with this link tag because it's a separate tag. Um, but we save that. Let's go back. I didn't center Bob, so go to Bob's all the way over here. But if I click on go to Bob, it takes us to Bob. Okay, so it works. Links is between our components. So you don't have to worry about wrapping things in router tags and setting up route tags like if you were using React Router. So that's that's pretty nice. That's pretty cool. That saves you a lot of time. Um, cool. The other cool thing you can do is you can do dynamic routing. Okay. So if you use Express, you probably have worked with like parameters and queries. Well, all that is here too, but in a nice Reacty way. So for example, let's say I want to create a folder call it test and in that folder we're going to create a file or actually I'll just create another copy of Bob paste and then we're going to rename this and then we have to, you put it in brackets so it'll be like we'll call it like my param. Okay. So technically the URL to this is slash test slash whatever someone types. And whatever someone types will be treated as my param, which is pretty cool. Now what we're gonna need to do where that's an index. I wanna go to my param. Okay, we're gonna need to import in order to use this whole parameter thing. We need to import router from next this time it's next router okay so basically this is what you're going to want to do so again in the component we're going to bring in use router that's the function from the next router library then within the component so i had to refactor this component because 
Um, it was initially a parentheses, which is an implied return. But you want to do this stuff before the return function. So basically, I wrapped it in curly braces and then added the word return before the parentheses with all the JSX. So basically, what you're doing is you're going to assign the use router or an instance of use router to the router variable, just so that we have it. And that's going to carry a query object. The query object has everything that you need. So it's going to have a variable that by the name of your param. So in this case, we named our file my param. So there's going to be a variable in my param, but it's not in a variable called my param yet. So when you put it in these brackets, it's going to look inside the query object for the variable that shares the same name and then assign it to it so you can use it. OK. And then down here, I just use it like you would use any other variable in React, my param. So you can use it to do all sorts of cool stuff. So let's take a look. So actually, let me take care, take out this query here. Cut. So I just put a little gibberish. And you get this. But if I put different gibberish, and just hit Enter, I get the different gibberish. Why? Because, again, we go. it takes a look in our pages folder and sees a, the test folder, so slash test, and then sees inside of it that my param with the square brackets being like, oh, OK, that's a dynamic route. So basically, whatever is put here is what we're going to use. And then not only can you do that, but you can also throw in queries. So I could do something like this. So query foo, I want to query foo for bar. So if I do that, I'm not printing it on the screen because I didn't print the query object in there. But you see, if I, I console logged my query, that, that router.query, and you can see it has the foo from the query, and it has the parameter of min. But I can make multiple queries. So I can store any kind of information I want. Hey equals ya. Yeah. Actually, I think that should be an ampersand. Because you don't need to do the question mark over and over again. So let's see if that all works. And there you go. See, now I have foo. I have foo property that has the bar value, hey that has the yaw value, and a my param that has the mmm value. So this gives you all sorts of cool things you can do, and you can you can put these in your your routers. But let's say I wanted to link to this, right? How would I do that? Well, here's how we would do it. So let's go back to our index and add another link. Um, index. Because uh, we already got the uh, link from next link imported there, so we just don't have to worry about that. We can just make another link. Let's see, link, and it's basically for href. You're going to put in the actual route, so it would be slash test slash my param. So that would find the actual file. But then you're going to add another property as and then you're going to put it what you want it to treat it as. So it'd be slash test slash it works. Then we'll put a query yo equals yo. Okay. Save. Okay, so we're going to go back to our index route. So clear all that out, go back to the root. Oh, I never changed the text of the second link, but that works. You're using uh, the usage has been deprecated. Okay, we'll come back to that. But if I click on it, see it works. And then here is my parameter project, my query object, which didn't pick up on the query. What did I do wrong with the query? Should have picked up on the query as well. Hit enter. Huh. Okay, does it that time? Doesn't do it before. I'll have to investigate as to why. If we go back home, here you're using a string directly inside link. Let's go take a look. What did I do different? Test my param. Yo, yo. That looks, that looks pretty healthy to me.
Got it. So if you wanted to pick up on the query, you do need to add the query in the original version. Because it'll still find the file because it has this piece in it. But you can still add the query here. Okay, so basically this is what it'll look like if you wanted the query and the parameter to be picked up. Um, and that's pretty cool. So dynamic routing is pretty awesome. Now, let's say someone goes to, let's say in the, that test folder. So let me create a duplicate of this. And this one's going to be called test. And I take out the param reference. So I'm say this is a static route. Meaning it's going to a page that's already created. It's not taking in any params. It's not taking any queries. Now watch what happens. If I go to test slash test, it's, gonna, it's always going to prefer the static route versus the dynamic route. So see, this is a static route. So instead of saying test there, like it would in our dynamic route, like if I just made it test one, it's going to say test one, not this is a static route. So basically you got to be careful what you name your different routes, what you name your files, because again, it can overwrite your stuff. So that's the deal there. Okay, so that'll we'll call that a day. See you guys in the next video. My name is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com.